Hello everyone and welcome back to my videos. In this video, I am continuing the kindergarten series where I'm sharing with you what your kindergartner needs to learn for reading, writing, and math. In the last video, I went over what your child needs to learn for reading and literacy. If you've missed that video, I'll link it below in the description box. Today, we're talking all about math and what your child needs to learn about math. Before they move on to the first grade, I'm going to share the manipulatives that I like to use, my favorite curriculum, and how I am making sure that my child is learning that foundational math that they need to learn so be able to build upon later on. There are so many math curriculums out in the market. There's a lot of them that are busy work. They don't meet standards. They don't help children really be able to um, have a good base for math so that they could build upon that. I've used so many different math curriculums throughout the year. And one favorite one that I have and that I've used with all of my kids is Matthew C. That is what I use for kindergarten math. And it is a very good curriculum because especially for kindergarten, for the four and five year old range, children do not have abstract thinking yet. So being able to use these manipulatives, to do addition, to do different math problems, to understand number quantity with these blocks and even tell time with blocks, which is a very creative way that they have learning telling time, uh, I think is just great. They're able to memorize the different quantities by color and they're able to do different addition problems, even high level addition problems like 100 plus 310, for example. They're able to do it with the blocks. And it also brings the hundreds blocks as well. Stay to the end and I'll show you a look inside of Matthew C, but that is the curriculum that we always start as a foundational level for our kids. And then we move on to Saxon. And I've shared that with in another video with you all. Um, but let's move on now to the different standards because for kindergarten, children need to learn a set of standards that's going to help them be able to go on to the first grade, second grade, and third grade and be able to be successful in math. And so another book that my husband and I created for that is Kindergarten Math. Um, and this is sort of like a prep book where we have studied the kindergarten standards and what children need to learn for kindergarten and we have always had a list of what our kids needed to learn but then we decided that to hold ourselves accountable it would be nice to have it all in one book so everything is here in this book what our kids should know for kindergarten it's kind of like a little practice book that we have them do along with math you see that way uh, we know that they're learning those standards instead of going by checklist like we were doing before. So I will be referring to this kindergarten math prep book um, throughout this video. I'm also going to be referring to this kindergarten fluency folder. And basically this is a folder where I host a lot of organizational charts that I use for kindergarten. And it covers all of, again, a lot of the standards, but these are in charts, so they're not worksheets. So it's going to have a lot of um, the things that kids need to learn for math. You're going to see a lot of my organizational charts in here that I will be referring to in the video. And I also have different manipulatives that I use for math. I have unifix blocks. I have pattern blocks. I have an abacus that I love to use. And I'm going to be sharing with you everything as I go through the standards. So starting with the first standard is counting through 100. That is something that you want your children to be leaving kindergarten with. Being able to count from 1 to 100. So I go to my kindergarten fluency folder and here I have a chart. It's a hundreds chart and I have my children just count. And I start off with 1 through 10 first and then I go through 1 through 20, 1 through 30, 1 through 40 until we get through 1 to 100. And uh, it is just a great way to do it, having it all in one binder here. Now, it is not only important for your children to learn how to count from one through a hundred, but they also need to know their number recognition. So I have these flashcards, and I have these flashcards from one through a hundred. I'll link them below. Uh, they're not needed. You can use the, the chart here that I have in the binder, but I think it's, it's helpful in a way because you want your children to be able to know the numbers out of order 
like if from 1 through 20. So if you call out, let's say, what's this number? Tell me what this number is. Or what is this number? Can you tell me what that number is? Just calling different numbers, they should be able to tell you. That's 18, knowing their numbers out of order. Knowing how to count is one thing, but knowing how to recognize a number, what a number is, out of order is another thing. And you want them to be able to know that from 1 through 20 as the basis, right? But then you want to also use your hundreds chart to go a little bit further if you can for the kindergarten year. Another concept that is important for kindergarten is skip counting. Skip counting is going to set a foundation for multiplication later, for telling time, and for many other mathematical concepts. Here in our fluency binder, again, I have all of the organizational charts, and I have skip counting by twos, skip counting by fives, and skip counting by tens, which is what I like to teach in the kindergarten year. For the kindergarten year, if you look up standards, it's going to be twos and tens for the most part. But I like to include fives because fives is what you're going to need for time telling. Um, also in the binder, I wanted to mention that I also have numbers out of order. So I have kids practicing here. I have a little pointer and I have them tell me the numbers out of order from 0 to 10 and tell me the numbers out of order from 0 to 20 as well. Um, but it's a handy chart and I like to sing songs when I'm teaching them skip counting. So I have all of the recordings for all of the songs and I like to use catchy rhymes. Um, and if you would like that file, I will link it below in the description box. So for example, for the skip counting by twos is the row, row your bow. So it goes like this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. And I'll just go over that song over and over until they've memorized it. And then I'll move on to the five song and then to the 10 song. And that is how we do it. It's fun. And they're like memorizing a song. Going back to the chart, I want to mention something else. One important concept is also having children be able to count on from any given number forward or backward. So that's really important and you can practice that on the hundreds chart. You can say, what comes after 35? Tell me a few numbers after that. Or what comes before 55? And you practice that. In the kindergarten math prep, we have a lot of practice uh, putting uh, numbers in order and they're required to write it. Another concept before you go on into addition is learning uh, number quantity. So I love using pattern blocks and I use them for so many things for addition for number quantity For patterns so many different things you can use um, these unifix blocks and what I like to do is I'll give children Like a number and I'll have them put the quantity next to that number Once they have done that I will have them uh, learn counting so I'll give them a set number of these unifix blocks and I'll have them count children should be able to count as much as 20 objects before they move on to the first grade and a lot of times they have problems when they're counting and they will skip one or they'll just go ahead and not point and count it's very important that they're pointing and counting together so they're not going too fast ahead of themselves but being able to count within 20 is required for kindergarten math before they move on to the first grade they also need to be able to learn quantities less and more so i love again the unifix blocks are just a great way of being able to teach that because i can give a child a number um, let's say I give them a certain number and I'll have them put that number next to the unifix blocks and then I'll put another number and have them put the unifix blocks next to it and then I'll have them compare which one is bigger which one is smaller that way they can see it um, so they should be able to tell what's larger and what's smaller with using manipulatives but also seeing a number as well and the way that we do it with just numbers is using a ruler. That is the way that we tell all, all of our kids. So let's say you tell them, what's bigger, five or nine? In a child's mind who's not able to think abstract yet, it's best to use something that they can use. So the ruler is really good because you tell them, 
The numbers going all the way down to one are going to be smaller and going all the way up to 10 is going getting larger. So if you ask them what is bigger, five or nine, they're going to be seeing that this number is towards the larger side, so this one's larger. So I like to use a ruler to be able to teach that concept. I also have um, that practice in our kindergarten math prep as well. The next concept that children need to learn after they've learned their number quantity and learning how to count 20 objects at a time is addition and subtraction within 10 using manipulatives. So I like to use the abacus. I'll give them, for example, addition problems and have them solve it in the abacus. And the abacus is a really a great tool because uh, it is something that it's easy to keep anywhere. Children love to use it. It's very visual and they can see the math problem and be able to count. I also like to use, again, the Unifix blocks. And I will give them different problems with the Unifix blocks so that they can uh, add and subtract within 10 using these different manipulatives. Once children are able to count 20 objects and they know number recognition, and they're able to add with manipulatives within 10, you can start teaching them how to add within five, just in their mind, in an abstract way. For a kindergarten, it is only required that they learn how to add within five. I like to give children a challenge and have them add within 10. So let's practice, Gabby, ready? I like to start with the doubles. What's one plus one? Two. What is three plus three? Okay, let's see, within five, what is three plus one more? Mm, four? Yes, what is two plus one more? Five. Two plus one more? Three. Yes, what is four plus one more? Five. What is one plus one more? Two. Yes, thank you, Gabby. You can go play it out. <laughs> so, you like... You start with the doubles, then you can add one, then you can add two, and so on like that. Um, but for kindergarten, just adding within five is sufficient. It is now required that they should be able to add in their mind. Especially Gabby, she's four years old, and she's a young kindergartner, so I'm not going to expect her to be able to do addition in her mind. For kindergarten, what is appropriate is to be able to add within 10, with manipulatives and then add abstract in your mind mental math from uh, within five next concept is teaching children patterns in kindergarten patterns are important to learn and for patterns there are three different patterns that you learn for kindergarten first you have the a b so a b is like this you have orange red orange red so they're able to know this pattern and you can give them different patterns and have them build it with the unifix blocks that's what i love to do then they also need to learn a a b b this would be an a a b b pattern yellow yellow green green yellow yellow what comes next green green and you continue building that pattern another one is a b c it's the last one that they would need to learn black white brown black white brown so then they would continue building so you give them certain patterns like one of these three patterns, and you have them build it with different colors. In our book here in Kindergarten Math Prep, we have pattern practice. Matthew C. also has practice for those patterns. Another concept that needs to be learned for kindergarten is being able to use blocks like these, geometrical shapes, to create new shapes. So I like to use these pattern blocks and I like to do different activities with them. For example, I have these that I print out and I'm always finding new ones in, um, according to what my kids are interested in. And I have, like I can build an eagle. Here's one that I have found um, recently. And these are different animals that they're building. And my kids have absolutely loved doing these. They're putting the little pattern blocks on top of the shape and they're building the different animals and then they're able to um, be able to mark down which shapes that they used and i'm going to be linking this principle below it's free and that way you can use it with your children also our kindergarten math prep book also has practice on 
using shapes to create a new shape and I love using the pattern blocks to bring learning alive a lot of times you see that I have a shelf with activities and I like to just bring some activities on the shelf to practice these basic skills that I, I think uh, will help them later on another thing that you want your kids to learn for kindergarten is not only learning their basic shapes like the circle the triangle the square you also want them to learn a little bit more such as the cone, the cylinder, the cube, the pyramid, the sphere, the triangular prism. Being able to start learning these shapes um, is important. And just having an organizational chart, which you can go over with during like a little circle time that you can do with them a few times a week, is sufficient to be able to meet that. I also have it here in our kindergarten math prep book where they're able to go over and practice those shapes as well. Another concept that your children need to learn is telling time. And I like to use these little dry erase clocks that I buy from Amazon. Anything that I've mentioned here, I'm going to link below in the description box. And I will write a time for the child here in this dry erase portion. And then they will find the time um, and move the little hand of the clock to find the time. And I'll keep giving them different times and then they will find it with their uh, little hands. I will also do it backward in which I will give them a time and have them write it down if they're if they can write their numbers already and that's really good practice for them for the kindergarten year you only need to be able to tell time by the hour and a lot of curriculums a lot of standards say they don't even teach time for kindergarten and so what i do for my kids is that i like to teach them time by the hour and by the half hour so we'll go teaching them by the hour and then by the half hour by the time they leave kindergarten and they are um, doing really well in our kindergarten math prep they were able to practice that the time and in the Matthew C program it's a little different they do the time with the uh, block so it's a different way of learning it but I think it's a good foundation for them another concept that we teach our children for the kindergarten year is money and we just use coins and we have this little container with nickels, dimes, quarters, and pennies. We also have some dollars that we'll bring out. I like to use real coins because that is what they're going to see in real life. And I think that when you have the fake money, it's not really uh, good learning because it's not how the coins look. It's, it's a toy, but these are the real coins that, that I have them learn with. The first concept is that I have them learn the names of the coins and be able to recognize this is a quarter. This is a dime. Both sides, look what it looks like. This is a nickel and this is a penny. I also have them uh, learn the quantities as well. This is 10 cents. This is 5 cents. This is 1 cent. And this is 25 cents. And I'll have, I'll practice with them, different little games on the table. I also like having a sorting activity where I'm having the child sort the nickels, sort the dimes, sort the quarters, sort the pennies. I think this is a great activity because while they're doing the sorting, they're learning the different coins. I'm calling out the names and it's just really good practice for them. I also will call out the coins and I'll say, give me a quarter give me a dime give me a nickel give me a penny and i'll call out different coins to have the child give it to me as they become familiarized with the different coins i can start and if they've already learned their skip countings then i'll have them count by tens with the with the dimes i have them count by fives with the nickels and i'll have them count by ones with the pennies and that is as far as i go with money for the kindergarten year and then we can build upon that when we get to first grade. You're not going to see a lot of money in, in most curriculums. They're not going to have money for the kindergarten year. And that's fine. That's not a standard that's required. But I think it's a good foundation to be able to teach them coin value and have them practice a skip counting that they already need to know their skip counting for the kindergarten year. Why not have them practice with the coins? So I think I've covered everything here that I've wanted to share with you for the kindergarten year. It's, it's very simple and I'm going to now give you a look inside of Matthew C and a look inside of the kindergarten math book, the prep book, the practice book, and also the little binder that I use to keep all of my 
uh, worksheets that I like to teach with. Um, and so I'm going to bring the camera a little closer to show you a look inside. So here is the Matthew C program. We bought this program about 10 years ago now, probably more than that. It brought the box. It brought the blocks. I know that they no longer bring the boxes anymore, but it was really helpful to organize all of the blocks by the different colors. And it also brings the hundreds and more of the tens. Um, when we need them, when we get towards the end of the book, we will pull those out. But all of my kids have used this program and it has been amazing for them. Let me show you how easy it starts off with, where they're just taking their blocks and they're just putting them down, learning their number quantity and having to know their number recognition as they circle each number. There isn't any writing in the beginning. There is just circling and coloring. They're doing a lot of number recognition, a lot of counting. It starts off with a really good foundation. Then as they go, go on, they're going to be tracing the numbers. And as they move on towards the back, they're doing patterns, they're doing counting. Um, and as they move towards the back of the book, it starts to get harder. They're, they're required not to write numbers down, to build numbers with their blocks. And it is amazing what the program takes them to. It starts off simple, but then they're doing addition. They're doing high level addition problems. They are doing also problems where they have to figure out the missing numbers. There's word problems that they have to figure out bigger addition problems that they're doing again with the blocks. And there's a lot of skip counting. There's tally marks. And the book is really good. Towards the end of the book, they're doing time, telling time, and they're using blocks as well, which is great. After they've learned how to do skip counting, which they do a lot of it in the book, the end ends with telling time. And I think it's just a great foundation. You're not going to see a lot of color in here, but it does set a good foundation for the kids. Let me show you now the kindergarten uh, fluency folder. This one is going to be a folder. If you want to get those printables, that you want to just make sure that your kids know for kindergarten, this is what this is going to have. And it's going to have all those basic shapes. It's going to have uh, shapes out of order so that they can call it out, making sure that they know their numbers out of order, in order, up to 100. Um, there's also skip counting by two, skip counting by fives, skip counting by tens counting up to 10 as that's a requirement the number line so that you can practice um telling which number is smaller or bigger there is money there is positional words a lot of different things telling time by the hour uh there's month of the year days of the week it goes on and on with a lot of ordinal numbers a lot of that, a lot of the kindergarten basics that children need to really know i start teaching this in preschool but I think the kindergarten fluency folder is a great folder if you want to have those principles at hand and just go over those basics and have those charts with you to go over the basics for kindergarten. Let me show you now our um, kindergarten math. This is going to be a simple book that's going to go over the standards for kindergarten. And again, it's going to start off very simple with numbers 1 through 20, having children count is going to have the numbers chart when you need it for every day practicing numbers counting one through 100. Uh, there's going to be skip counting by two, skip counting by tens, two dimensional shapes, all of those basics that they need to learn. These are just uh, charts that it has in the beginning before they get into things. Um, but it starts off simple as count and write. And there's a lot of uh, filling in the numbers, fill, filling in the missing numbers so that they can learn number order. Uh, there's a lot of shape activities and it's going to progress where they're going to be learning a lot of the standards that I mentioned here with simple activities. They are very simple. Here's a count and write. Um, skip counting by twos, count and write. It's just basic practice so that they can get to meet those standards. Here's figure data collection. Draw a cell boat using the shapes. Again, using those uh, pattern blocks or drawing something with shapes to create something new is a standard that needs to be learned for kindergarten. There's telling time by the hour. Lots of different um, activities in this kindergarten math prep book. 
I'm going to link everything that I mentioned here below in the description box. I hope that you have enjoyed this video of kindergarten math. It doesn't have to be hard. There are curriculums that make kindergarten math hard and they teach concepts that don't need to be taught and that kids are not yet ready for. And you will see kids get frustrated with certain math curriculums. That's when you know that there's something going on that maybe the child developmentally is not ready to be able to do abstract problems, abstract thinking. And um, that is why I use so many manipulatives for kindergarten math, for preschool math, for first grade, and even second grade. I love to use different manipulatives. Once they have that good foundation, I start to move away. And that is the reason why I don't use Matthew C for more than one or two years, because I want to now move on to teaching math in a different way. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I will link all of the resources that I've mentioned in the video. Continue watching me in this series. In the next video, I'm going to talk about kindergarten writing and what is required for kindergarten and writing. I will link below if you've missed the literacy reading video on what your children need to learn for reading and for literacy. I'll link that.